the free code camps learn accessibility by building a quiz module for the responsive web design certificate and we're on step 50 now so on small screens the unordered list in the navigation bar overflows to the right side uh, so let's just see if we can see that so there you go you can see css um, has been lost there fix this by using flexbox to wrap the ul content then set the following css properties to correctly align the text um, so let's see we are using flexbox here so um, let me just see if that will um, apply to them flex wrap oh sorry to wrap the content so we want to do a flex wrap and wrap so what this is going to do is now when we go over you can see here it's wrapping down um, which I guess is okay for now so is it not working there we go so that passes the test there sorry laptop's been a bit slow today uh, so step 51 set the width of the section elements to 80 percent of their parent container so let's just get the sections and we'll do width 80 percent and then use margins to center the section elements adding 10 percent or sorry 10 pixels to the bottom margin so we'll do margin um, margin that should be i think zero and auto auto to center um, although if we want 10 pixels margin bottom um, let's come back to that but I know we can do max width and this is 600 pixels um, let's just try sorry margin bottom so zero top 10 pixels bottom zero left and zero right um, actually no it'll be top right bottom left so it should be like this let's just see i don't think that's going to pass no margin top zero okay uh, top zero let's do margin um bottom 10px and then I'm trying to think how we can oh, okay so <laughs> margin right is auto and I'm sure margin left is auto as well um, don't generally do that with margins to center things uh, so that's why it's a bit strange but there we go normally you can do zero auto if all of the or if the top and bottom elements um, are the same but because we want margin on the bottom it's got to be written out like this so step 52 replace the top margin um, of the h2 elements with 50 px of top padding so this is going to be padding uh, dash top uh, 60 sorry px of pixels let's check that and oh, margin dash top uh, zero so we want to take off the margin and replace it with padding okay so step 53 um, add padding to the top and left of the info elements dot, so dot info let's target them with that class and set the other values to zero so padding um, yeah top and left so let's just do 10px and then at zero um, Oh, hold on sorry no it's top and left and then zero for bottom and right um, there is a shorthand way I can't think of it right now so what I'm gonna do is just do padding top um, like 5px padding dash left 5px and take this off and what I'll do is she just copy and sort of paste these down these will then both be zero and uh, that will be um, top left bottom 
And then the last one is just right like that. Oops, it's selected or overridden R0 there. So let's check that. Uh, there we go. Not the nicest way. I think there are shorthands um, for this, but yeah, I can't think of it right now. So I'd have to look it up. And as I said, I don't generally set um, sort of margins and padding like this. So anyway, step 54, give the row form elements dot row form, sorry, form row. Uh, filming on a Friday evening after <laughs> coding all week. Yeah, it's been a long one. Um, but anyway, give the former elements top margin and left and right padding. So we'll do margin dash top. Let's just give that 10 pixels. It's not specifying which ones. Uh, and then padding, so top and bottom. Oh, sorry, left and right padding. Um, so it'll be zero, top and bottom, let's say 10 px left and right. And the font dash size. Oh, and actually, that's form row, God. And then the input elements. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, need a font size. <coughs> oh dear, it's all going wrong today. Um, let's just do 1.2 rem, for example. And it needs to spell input right. So and rem guard. Uh, so it wants to be greater than 13 pixels. Okay, let's do 14 pixels. There we go, that passes now. So step 55, to make the first section look more in line, target only the input elements within the info elements. So dot info, and then input like that. And set their width to 50% and text uh, line uh, left like that. There we go. Step 56, target all label elements within the info elements. Um, so we'll do dot info label like that to select them, set their width to 10% and make it so that they do not take up less than 55 pixels. So we'll do a min width um, 55 pixels, like so. There we go, that passes. Step 57, to align the input boxes with each other, create new rules set um, that targets all input and label elements within an info element. Set the display, so let's just do this, so dot info, oops, and this will be so input uh, plus label, I think that's right. Um, display play inline dash block and also align the label elements text to the right. So we're going to do text dash align right. Oops, align. So let me just see. No, I don't think that will pass. Yeah, that's right. So we want to, yeah, there's another way to sort of bunch these up. So it will be, again, dot .info. So it's the input that was in, within info and the labels within info um, with that comma, or you can do, yeah, sort of this. So nested within, there we go. I think it just looks a bit cleaner um, not to have the angled bracket. So to neaten the question block element, set the following CSS properties. So dot question block. And they've given it all to us, so it's just a copy and paste. Not quite sure what the benefit is of that, but I guess you can see the CSS sort of coming to life. Um, and finally, for this video, step 59, make the paragraph elements appear as a higher priority with the following CSS properties. So it, this will just be P, I guess, um, unless we need to specify which ones. But there we go. And you can see it's coming on quite nicely. So, cool, that all passes. So thanks for watching, hope it was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video.